worth a fortune, these. Who is the painter? Who is the painter? Triumph Farrell, of course. Oh, that one? That one. He gets a thousand pounds for the flick of a brush. Fortune he makes. My word, these? Is this Priam Farrell an Englishman? Yes, but they say he never comes here. No one ever sees him. Yeah, he's shy, always in hiding. My name of Priam Farrell. I wouldn't be in hiding. How much do you think that would cost? Oh, exhibit. When are you returning to America, Mr. Whit? Tomorrow. I wish there was some way I could meet Farrell. There isn't. I've been his agent for 15 years, and I've never met him. Strange man. Wise man. He lives his own life. These, my boy, were painted by your famous cousin. All of them? Oh, the tenth of what he's done. He simply spawns paintings. Big part. Are you related to Priam Farrell? I'm his first cousin. Could uh, you tell me where I might find him? I doubt if anyone could tell you that. I haven't seen him since he was a child. Even his bankers don't know him. I'm sorry. Thank you. This is the Farrell exhibitor. Thank you so much. May I show you about? Oh, please don't trouble. Trouble, I assure you. Now, uh, Aren't your cousin's paintings wonderful? Yes, Papa. Isn't that one particularly fine? Yes, Papa. This is his most famous painting. The policeman. Nice, isn't it? Nice? Why, it's worth thousands. Dear, dear. Can't see a policeman being worth all that. I suppose you know Mr. Farrell well. Me? I had never even seen him. No one has. I know his secretary, Mr. Lee. You? Well, that is, I don't exactly know him. I, uh, I correspond with him. He writes nice letters. That's the way I got married. I beg your pardon? The matrimonial times. Is that the paper you use? Really, my dear man, I... There's no need to get touchy. <laughs> it's as good a way as any. Did yours turn out well? Well, uh, she has a bit of a limp, but she's jolly. <laughs> Where was he when you last heard? His last picture came from Spain. You can't dream what these few weeks have meant to me. I've wanted for years to know you. Oh, really, Lady Helen? You don't know how great you are. How simple. Simple? Unpretentious, unaffected, like a child. If only we could be together always. <laughs> That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Really? Do you mean that? Oh, why, I, I, I oh, mean I... glorious. <laughs> I'll take you out of your shell. I'll take you out into the world where you belong. No, 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 I'm afraid of the world. Oh, oh not my world. You yes. love my world. No, 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 I won't. I, I, you see, I can't bear being noticed. People terrify me. I, well, I've always been like that. Of course, you can't understand. There, but dear, there. You'll get over all that. I'll help you. No, I... Oh, Mary. Oh, good afternoon. Mary, the most wonderful thing has happened. Should we tell her, dear? Why, I'm... Uh, of course we must. Uh, well, she's my dearest friend. There's no need to tell me, I can guess. Why, it's written all over you. Oh, I'm so glad, Mr. Farrell. I'm sure you'll both be very happy. Oh, yes. Thank you. We have the most wonderful plans. We're going to travel. We're going into the world. You've no idea what a lion will be, Mr. Farrell. No, I suppose not. I, I have to... Excuse me, I have to go back to the inn now. But... Yeah, we'll see you for dinner, dear. Yes, yes. We'll celebrate. Yes, do. However did it happen? I'll never know. I can scarcely believe it. It's wonderful, dear. Dear Mrs. Hunter, your photograph is beautiful. Will I ever see the original? Not unless I find a new master. I am enclosing a snapshot of Mr. Farrell and me. The one on the right is me. Nick. Nick, pack. Pack up. We've got to get out of here. 
to get away from here at once. What's happened, sir? It's not going to happen, Leek. Now, pack up and don't ask any questions. Well, where are we going, sir? Oh, I don't know. Anywhere away from here. Some place where they can't find me. Nobody knows you in London, sir. Huh? Perhaps you're right, Leek. We could open up the old house. After all these years? Yes, no one would know you were there, sir. Right again, Leek. Who's that? El senor asked for the bill. Oh. Yes, pay it, Leek, will you? No one's heard about either, you understand? Si, senor. No one. Si, si. Give us something extra, Leek. Here, Rita. Take care of the servants. Oh, my God. We'll be back. You think of me, it's a cord of duty. Always, always. Oh, you All that muttering out there. Get on with your packing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Me retrace the protest again for que you de I found the doctor three doors off. He'll be here in a minute. You ought not to have gone out without your coat, sir. We don't want you to catch cold, too. Oh. Here. Your dressing gown, sir? No. We must get you to bed at once. You think you can make it up one flight to my room? Me? Yeah. In your bed, sir? Oh, don't be silly. Come on, I'll help you. I hate to be such a nuisance. Come on, I hate to be such a nuisance, sir. Come on, come on. You'll be all right in the morning. Just a cold. <coughs> I mentioned this address, the doctor gave me a most peculiar look. How long has Mr. Farrell been ill? I asked you, how long has your master been ill? Oh, yes, yeah, well, I... We... He began to complain when we got off the boat this morning. What, what's wrong, do you think, Doctor? I don't know yet. Might be anything. Bring me some boiling water at once. There isn't any. You have water, haven't you? Oh, yes, but... Not boiling. Well, never mind. I'll get it faster. I'll bring my assistant. Thank you. Get his clothes off. Have you brandy? Yes. Well, get it. Yes. Be of some use here. This is serious. My poor Leek, he takes you for me. We ought to tell him. Not at all. It'll save me a lot of that infernal curiosity. Now, come on. Get some of these clothes off, huh? <coughs> I, I hate to be such a nuisance. Sir. Where is the brandy, Lee? In my small bag, sir. The temperature 104 and a half. Hold 140 in a week. We'll try an injection of strychnine at once. Uh, can I help? Can I do anything? Can you see that chair? Uh, 
Yes, I see it. Well, go and sit in it. I see. Yeah. Where's that brandy? What? The brandy. The brandy. Oh. Isn't that it there? Yes, yes. Yes. Has he any relatives? Oh, I don't know. They should be notified at once. Huh? Doctor. It's all over, my man. Oh, but he can't be. He, he was a perfectly strong, healthy man. Precisely. It's not unusual for strong, healthy men to go off suddenly from acute double pneumonia. But it's impossible. I, I don't know what I'll do without that man. I, look here, you don't seem to be much use here. I'll notify the registrar. Register? We have to report Mr. Farrell's death, you know. Okay, Doctor, I'm afraid there's been some mistake. What? Uh, you see, I... Now, listen I, to me, my man. Uh, there's been no sort of mistake. Everything's been done that could be done. Uh, yes, but I... Uh, okay. I uh, You're all done up. You need some rest. I'll be back in the morning. But, Doctor! Yes, Doctor? What's that? What time? Where? Pneumonia? Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you. Brian Farrell's there. Brian Farrell's there. Brian Farrell's there. Captain, try to leave. Yes, Vincent. Get sick. All the leading patients. Yes. Bring me the Farrell's boat. Yes. Brian Farrell is there. Brian Farrell's there. Brian Farrell's there. Brian Farrell's there. Brian Farrell is there. Why don't you... You took your time answering. This is Mr. Duncan Farrell, the late master's cousin. Where is the body? Upstairs, first door. Leek! Leek! Your name's Leek, isn't it? This is for you. I picked it up at the door. See here, Leek. If I were you, I wouldn't try and get another balloting job. Uh, I beg your pardon? You may have suited Priam Farrell. Artists are strange. But I don't believe you'd suit an ordinary employer. Thank you. Do you recognize your cousin? I haven't seen him since he was 12 years old. But I think I may safely say I should have recognized him anywhere. I shall treasure this as a memento. His shroud, as it were. 
Well, I'll be going. What arrangements have you made? None. I've been asleep. You're not very respectful. Okay, now, that dressing gown belongs to me. Oh, so you're starting to claim things, are you? We'll soon put an end to that. Pigsty. Now, what you're doing is a painting things. Oh, so you're a painter too, are you? Now, see here, Leek. I fancy you and I had better come to an understanding at once. What salary did my cousin pay you? A hundred pounds a year. When were you last paid? Uh, let's see, I, um... Well? I... Oh, the day before yesterday. Here's eight pounds in lieu of notice. Yes, but listen, Take I... Take it. But I want to tell you... Take it. I... Now pack up and get out of this house as soon as you can. But I'm not... I shall I... not argue. Are his papers here? Yes. Where's the key? There's something I want to tell you. No doubt. No doubt. Ah. Here's his will. Oh, that's still there. I thought it had been destroyed. Do you know what it says? Everything is left to England for the establishment of a new gallery. And you get five pounds for your trouble as executor. Yes, I see. Well, he probably thought I should be annoyed. He did. Well, my man, the idea of a great public institute bearing my family name is not unpleasant to me. But he meant it as a joke. I don't see why you complain. You come into 80 pounds a year under it. <laughs> yes, I was forgetting about that. I never saw such a disrespectful servant in my life. Now, get your things together and go. Yes, sir. Whose luggage is that? Mine. Yours, indeed. Are your initials P.F.? Oh. Have you a latch key? You have all the keys. I'll notify you about the funeral. Where will you be stopping? Grand Babylon Hotel. The man's mad.
Mr. Lee. Well, I suppose you are Mr. Lee, aren't you? Oh, uh, oh, I, yes. Oh. I really didn't expect you. Mr. Farrell being dead, I knew you'd be upset like. How did you know he was dead? How did I know? Why, it's been placarded all over London since early morning. Didn't you see? No. Oh, that shows how you must have been thinking. I was about to give you up. Really? Well, it's nearly two o'clock. Huh? Oh, yes, excuse me. Uh, will you take those bags upstairs? Should we sit here? Nicer in the back. <laughs> Was Mr. Farrell a good master? Oh, very, yes. Oh, won't you sit down? Thank you. But I see you're not in mourning. No, that is, I'm... I don't hold with mourning myself. If you can't show respect without a pair of black gloves that the dye's always coming off of, it's grumbling against Providence, too. Not but what I don't think there's a good deal too much talk about Providence. Oh, I quite agree with you, yes. I suppose you'll have to be going back soon to arrange things like... Oh, no. No, I've been dismissed. I hope you made them pay you your money. Oh, yes. Who dismissed you? M Mr. Duncan Farrell. He's a fool. Why? Well, let me keep my dressing gown. Thought I was trying to steal it. That kind. It, and it was a beautiful dressing gown, really. Yes, and then uh, there was something very important I wanted to tell him, and he, he wouldn't let me. But how could he stop you? Cut me off, like, like that. Perhaps you really didn't want to tell him. You could write him, you know. No, no, I won't write him. Then you didn't want to tell him. Perhaps you're right. And if I were you, I should think no more about it. You're a great comfort, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Alice is all right. Uh, Alice, yes, yes. And you've no occasion to be shy with me. There's no call for it. I'm just as you see me. Shy? Oh, I don't feel shy with you. That's all right, then. Because I should take it as a poor compliment being shy with me. You know, uh, I think a matrimonial agency is very good and useful, don't you? Well, uh, yes, I suppose, yes. Because if you are thinking of getting married, well, what are you to do? You could sit in a chair and wait till legs are six months a dozen and you'd be no nearer. No. If you want to get married, you want to get married. There's no use pretending you don't. I do hate pretending. And if you ask me, matrimonial agencies are the most useful things ever invented. Next to dress shields. <laughs> and it's your prices. <laughs> Look, will you have lunch with me? Oh, if you have time. I have so much time. If anything comes of this, I shall pay the fee to the agencies with the greatest of pleasure. <laughs> so that was the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it would be. <laughs> You are like your photograph. Like my photograph? I knew you at once. May I see it? Oh. Thank you. I love it. The one on the right is me. If it isn't rude to ask, Mr. Lee, why did you always typewrite your letters? It seems so public. You see, I write so badly. Poor Mr. Fowle. What good did it do him to be so celebrated? Always trying to hide as if the police were after him. After all, he had the pleasure of being successful in the work he liked best to do. Well, but couldn't he have had that without chasing all over Europe? He might just as well have been a commercial traveler. This <laughs> <laughs> you <so> wonderful. <laughs> you can laugh, Mr. Lee. <laughs> but believe me, there's nothing like a comfortable home and a quiet life. And the less you're in the newspapers, the better. Right. Nothing like it, indeed. I can't imagine a person being afraid of anyone. When I'm with you, I can't imagine it either. When I was with him, I understood it, though. Poor man. He doesn't need to be afraid of anyone Extra now. Extra crime foul day! Extra! Extra crime foul day! Extra But you haven't told me whether you were ever married. No, never. You've always lived alone like that. No home, traveling, and no one to look after you properly. Well, one gets accustomed to it. I suppose so. But I feel sorry for you all these years. A country garden. A country garden? That's what they're playing. Mm. Lovely, isn't it? Have you a garden, Alice? Yes, with a wall around. Was it only today we met? Magic day. And now 
Goodbye, Mr. Gilling. Oh, please don't. I hope it is late now, Mr. Gilling, back to Sutton. I'll see you home. Oh, no, you poor dear. You're too tired. But we could walk to the tube. Is it far? Not very. Oh, it's too bad. I wish we could take the music with us. We can. I suppose I was rather wonderful. Am, I mean. You're wonderful. Thanks. Yeah. You're Mr. Leake, I presume. What of it? I'm Horning of the Courier. I'm Bob and not the Mercury. Well, you've no right to intrude yourself in here. My paper's prepared to offer you a hundred pounds for your story on Parallel's eccentric life on the continent. Eccentric life on the... Well, I will be... I'll write the article. All you have to do is sign it. You'll make it 125 pounds. To sign an order for the fellow's execution. 150. Or burning at the stake. Uh, can you tell me if Mr. Farrell had any notion that he'd be buried in the Abbey. Buried in the Abbey? Why, it's preposterous. Why preposterous? Why bury that fellow in the Abbey? England's sacred shrine, where only the great are buried? It's absurd. Absurd? Do you know about his will? He left everything to found a gallery of modern art in London. Oh, so that's it. He's to be buried in the Abbey because he's a philanthropist, not because he's an artist. Oh, that's England all over. Yes, well, I won't have it. You'll not. No. <laughs> I'll do something else. Farrell is not dead. Not dead. <laughs> oh, what next? I am Priam Farrell. Oh. <laughs> oh, get out. Is he mad? He must be. Nothing but a valet. He takes a suite in the most expensive hotel in London. Then he refuses 150 pounds. And now, bless me, if he doesn't think he's Priam Farrell. <laughs> get out. <laughs> he's been on me, if you ask me. Priam Farrell, is he? <laughs> must be stopped. Must be stopped. I Someone should explain to the Dean of Westminster. Someone should... Mr. Parker at home? Mr. Parker? This is the Dean's house. Oh, pardon me, I... I, I thought Mr. Tanner lived here. Mr. Tanner? But you said Mr. Parker. And, uh, did I... Forgive me, I'm a little confused. Obviously. But I say I... I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. But the Abbey. Oh, it's fantastic.
that noise in here. I have no idea. I'd be so honored. <laughs> who, who is it? Don't know him from Adam. You have no right to be here. Who are you? What's all this noise? I have no idea. I have no idea. They're waiting for you. Get him out. <laughs> no, stop. This is my funeral. Shh, why do I do it? No, I tell you, it's my funeral. I'm going to leave it. I tell you, I am Brian Farrell. Drunk, that's what he is. What's all this? He's been making a disturbance in the organ. He says he's Brian Farrell. Oh, is that so? Let go of me, will you? Easy, my lad. What's all this? Drunk and disorderly in the abbey. I'm not drunk, I'm stunned. After if you only knew what was going on in there. <laughs> no, no, don't cry. <laughs> but what am I to do? <laughs> well, first of all, if I was you, I should get a new hat. <laughs> there, there, stop crying. Oh, it is the music. Now off with you. You'll be needing a new hat. That's what the policeman said. Well, don't tell me you've been quarreling with policemen. I tried to stop them burying that fellow in the abbey. But why should you do that? Because there's been a dreadful mistake. There, I... there, you're all upset. Just a moment. What will she think of me? Do sit down. No, but I'm... I'm... I tell you, there's been a dreadful mistake. There, there. Oh, but I must tell you, my real name is not Henry Leake. Oh, isn't it? No. Well, what does it matter, so long as you haven't committed a murder? But my real name is Priam Farrell. I thought that was your gentleman's name. Well, the doctor thought Leake was me, and I tried to tell him, and he wouldn't let me. I don't know what you're talking about. But can't you understand? I am Priam Farrell. I had a valid call Leake. He died, and they thought he was me. You mean it's Henry Leaf that's buried in the Abbey? Yes, of course, yes. Well, if I were you, I should keep perfectly silent about it. Uh, you don't believe me. I shouldn't let it worry me. The best thing you can do is to forget it. He doesn't believe me. Give me your coat. Oh, I see your collar's coming fast. Mm -hmm. Well, let me, I can do it. You have two funny moles on your neck close together. That's good luck. There. That's better. I hope you're not thinking of taking another position immediately. Position? Uh, no, no, of course not. No. It's not necessary, you know. What with your legacy and my income from the brewery shares? Brewery shares? Yes. Father always said, keep your money in beer, Alice. Beer will never fail you in England. And he was right. Yes. Put this on. You'll be more comfortable. Do you mean that you want to share your income with me? What else? And your home? Why not? <laughs> Alice, you're wonderful. You, you even remember the dressing gown. I've wanted someone to look after a long while. Heaven knows you need it. It'll be the, the beginning of a new life. <laughs> For all the tearing around you've done. Why, well, I'll be a different person. At least you'll have peace and comfort. Oh, no, it's too fantastic. I'll bring no end of trouble on us. No more than we can take care of. I'd be born again. <laughs> that does sound a bit religious. 
your milk will be boiling over. Perhaps I have died and gone to heaven. Drink this. I do. I do. Want anything else, love? What are you reading that's so interesting? Oh, Priam Farrell's Princely Bequest. New gallery of modern art studies. Foundation stone laid, eulogies and so on. So, they've begun it. Uh, Taken them long enough. A uh, year. You know, it is true. What's true? I have died and gone to heaven. Silly. <laughs> and I've got something to show you. What? Close your eyes and follow me. I'm following. Eyes closed. Tight. See nothing. I smell something. It's a... Uh, it's... It's paint. Oh, I know. You're painting the bathroom chair. Bathroom chair, indeed. Now, now turn around. Mm -hmm. Open your eyes. There. Oh. Did you do that? <laughs> yes. How'd it strike you? Well, I'm sure it's very beautiful, but what is it? Is that the bridge? Yes, dear, but don't go any nearer. Well, if you don't want me to see it close. Well, you can't take a picture like snuff, you know. What's that red streak behind there? There? That's the railway bridge. Oh, so it is. Now, if you were to put a train on it, then people would be sure. <laughs> I suppose you learned to paint from your... Pretty good, you know. In fact, it's devilish good. Old fellow would have got 800 pounds for the like of that. It's wonderful how wonderful people become after they're dead. Oh, there's the postman. Excuse me. I'm sure it's very wonderful, dear. By Jove, I can paint. Poor Alice, she will think me mad. Here's a bit of news. What is it? My brewery shares. We shan't get a penny this year, not one penny, unless there's been some mistake. Yes, sir or madam. No. Been no mistake with Boris done for, in fact. This would have been a great surprise to father. Well, whether we get anything or not, I've got pastry to make. Oh, you can look. I'm not worrying. I've no patience with worrying. No, I don't want you to worry. Alice, I can always take care of you. If you think I'm going to let you go into another situation, you're mistaken. No, I, I wasn't thinking of that. Then what were you thinking? Oh, I Because don't know. those things they advertise, homework, envelope addressing, and selling gramophones on commission, they're no good, you know. Look here, Alice. I can sell that picture and anything else that I paint. Please, please don't bother about money. I won't have you bothering. Why, Alice, you're crying, darling. Yes. Only because I think it's so awfully nice of you, wanting to help like oh, that. Oh, you darling. Another beauty, Mrs. Lee. Isn't it? This will make Mr. Cohen's eyes pop. I told him he'd have to pay 15 pounds for the next one. It's nice of you to handle these for me, Mr. Simmons, but I wish you'd take a commission. No, indeed. Mr. Cohen always buys a frame, and that's payment oh, enough. You are kind. And how is Mr. Lee? Very well, thank you. Marvelous to so make money like this. And it's so easy for him. A few hours and it's done. Someday he may be famous. Oh, I hope not. He wouldn't like that. Wouldn't he now? Not in the least. Well... As they say, it takes all kinds of people to make a world. Mm. 
Whoever said that was more than right, Mr. Simmons. More than right. He was, Mrs. Leek. He was indeed, Mr. Simmons. Isn't it a beauty? How much? I told you the last time, the price has gone up. It's 15 pounds. 60 pounds, Feinberg. All right. Where did you get this? That's my affair. It's good enough, but it's unsigned. Unknown painters are hard to sell, you know. Not that one. How much do you want for it? A hundred pounds. I'll risk that much. I'll send you a check. Thank you, Mr. Oxford. And, uh, Feinberg. Yes, sir. You might send me any more of this fellow's things you get. I'll see what I can do. Here's a mystery. What's that, sir? Well, don't you recognize the painter? No, sir. This is a Priam Farrell. Well, how can that be, sir? We've bought up all the Farrell. We thought so. But there's no doubt this is a Farrell. Take a cable to Mr. Witt. Have found another Farrell. Unusually fine example. Painting unsigned but I will guarantee it. I'm sending it to you tomorrow. Oxford. Lovely. Loveliest thing I've ever seen. Silly. It is silly to be in love with one's wife. And your wife is silly too? No, my wife is wise. <laughs> my poor dear, I know so little. She knows how to live. And that's everything. And you've taught me. Well, it's the thing we do most of, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I'm painting better than I ever did. Your last picture brought 50 pounds. Think of it. It's like a fairy tale. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, one of your tradesmen. They know better than to come to my front door. <laughs> well, I have to go to work. In any case, you have to be paid, you know. Is this Mr. Leake's house? Yes. Could I see him? It's about pictures. Well, would you come in? Thank you. Henry, here's a gentleman come to see you about pictures. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Good afternoon, Master. Good afternoon. I've been buying some things of yours, and I've traced them, not without difficulty, to the picture framer shop here. Yes, that's where I sell Mr. Leake's pictures for him. Ah, I called to see if by chance you'd anything more for sale. Uh, pardon me, uh, may I look? Oh, do. It's a masterpiece, madam. Yes, it is rather pretty when you come to look at it. Oh. If you care to consider, say, uh, 500 pounds. 500 pounds? Why, oh, Henry, that's marvelous. I came prepared to spend, uh, <clears throat> if you'll kindly count these. Oh, I'm too dizzy to count them. I never did understand this art business. How did you do it, Mr. Farrell? Do what? Escape from the Abbey. What's that? I saw Priam Farrell buried in the Abbey. So did I. And now I'm talking to him. Alice, you see what comes with meeting strangers. Do you mind telling us who you are? Oxford, of Parfitt's Gallery. Uh, Quite so. You're old dealer, Mr. Farrell. And so what makes you think I'm Priam Farrell? That and the other pictures that I've bought. My style is entirely different from Farrell's. Oh, you tried to disguise your brush. Your signature's in every stroke. Mr. Oxford, I must ask you to say nothing to anyone about this mad idea of yours. It'll be devilish awkward. I'm afraid I shall have to ask you to state publicly that you're Priam Farrell. Publicly? Why? I've been selling some of your paintings to Mr. Witt of Pittsburgh with my guarantee that they're genuine Farrells. You've no right! Mr. Witt has discovered a date on the back of one of the canvases. And that date is after your uh, death. Yes. Do you see the fix? Yes, it's your fix. 
Mr. Witt's bringing suit against me for fraud. My reputation's at stake. I shall have to insist upon your going into the witness box. Me in the witness box? A public cross-examination? No, 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 I think it's unthinkable. It's un I'll have to ask you to go, Mr. Oxford, and here's your money. We can't be under obligation. But I bought this picture. I must insist upon having it. Very well, take it, but you must pardon us. I can't have my husband upset. I'm sorry, Mrs. Fowler. Good day, Master. You can find your way. Oh, yes, thank you. Now we're in for it. I told you I'll bring down trouble on us. If he tells that I'm Farrell, I, I'll never face it. Reporters, publicity, there, I... There, now, dear, you mustn't get all on wild again. Come, I'll fix your teeth. Oh, Alice, I... Uh, your faculty for remaining calm is amazing. Well, somebody has to keep calm. You don't seem to care tuppence whether I'm Brian Farrell or not. Well, what does it matter to me who you are, so long as you're you? You can be the Shaw of Persia, if you like. But I am Farrell. Honestly, I wish I wasn't. But I am. Bless you, love. It doesn't matter. Come. But that isn't what you said in the first place. On the contrary, that's exactly what I said. Oh, what a memory you have. Uh, huh? Kate? Yes. Marmalade? No, dear. Who could that be? This Mr. Henry Leakes, yes. What is it you wish? We were determined to get in, and in we've got. John, shut the door. Yes, Henry. Now, Mother, don't put yourself about. Where is Mr. Henry Leake? There you are, Henry. After 25 years, think of it. I'm his wife, ma'am, the rightful Mrs. Henry Leake. And these are my sons who have come with me to see that I get justice. What does it mean? What does it mean? I think you'd all better come and sit down. There. Will you? And which of you boys had the idea to keep a middle-aged woman perishing on the doorstep? Now, Mother, don't give way. I think we'd all better have tea. Now, Mother, do you recognize this man as your husband? Yes. It's a rare long while. You're sure he's your husband and our father? Yes. And sorry I am to say it. Never saw her before in my life. I never saw her. He married me just 25 years ago. And a month after our twins were born, he just walked out of the house and left me. And never a word of explanation. I never saw her in my life. I never saw her. Then how do you explain this marriage certificate, sir? Do you really recognize my husband? Your husband, madam? He's the same sort of man, and got the same eyes. Uh, now, Mother, uh, don't give way. <laughs> Do you remember, Henry, how you said you wouldn't be married in a church, not for anything? But it's strange our sons should both be curates. And now, this dreadful scandal. <laughs> you may shrug your shoulders, but you can't shrug us our distance. Here we are. And you can't get away from us. You're a, a bigamist, sir. A deserter of women. Heaven only knows... Sugar. Uh, uh, two, please. Uh, two, please. One, please, please. And how did you happen to find us out at last? Through an advertisement in the paper put in by that Mr. Oxford. I need not say, madam, that you have all our sympathy. You mean me? I repeat, madam, you have our sympathies. You are not his wife. You can never be his wife. You are living in the same house with him under circumstances which I hesitate to, to name the situation in plain words. No, oh, I'm afraid. Would you please hand this to your mother? Oh. oh, John, you always wear so clumsy. And a clean cloth, too. Oh, don't mind, please. Dear. Will you run into the kitchen and bring me something to wipe this up with? Yes, dear, of course. Immediately, huh? Yes, sir. Okay. He's gone. He's gone. Who? Father. Father. 
I'm afraid so. Does he mean to come back? I'm afraid not. There's not the slightest use trying to drive him. He can only be led. You see, he's rather peculiar. Who knows better than I that he's peculiar? He has his good points. Far be it for me to say anything against him. He's often very good to me, but... Uh, a cup of tea, Mr. John. You don't mean to tea, yeah. One morning when I was ironing, he snatched the hot iron and... Don't. Don't. I know because I've been through. You don't mean to say that he threatened you with if a... threatening were only all. Then he's not changed in all these years. He was always so queer. Queer. That's it. Queer. I don't think he's quite right in the head. I never wake up in the morning, but what? I don't think maybe today they'll put him away. Put him away? Yes, in Hanwell or whatever asylum it is they put them in. Would you please pass the cakes? Uh, did you say asylum? Yes. And you have his blood in your veins. Another cup of tea. Yes, ma'am, if you please. I think I ought to tell you that this is my house and my furniture. He has nothing at all. Oh, is that so? Many a blow he's laid on me in anger. But all the same, I pity him. Maybe these two strong young men will be able to do something with him. But I doubt it. He's very strong. And he has a way of leaping out at you sudden like. I was that relieved when he left the house just now. He ought to be prosecuted for bigamy. That's what ought to be done. Uh, most decidedly. Quite right. That would only be justice. But then, of course, he'd deny he's this same Henry Lee. If he is, I'm sure of it. No doubt you could prove it. But the trouble with these law cases, they're so expensive. What with private detectives and that sort of thing. Yes, that's very true. And, of course, there'd be the scandal. Oh, don't mind me. I'm innocent, but I don't know how it would suit you, Mr. John and Mr. Henry, as clergymen, to have it known that your own father was in prison. I don't know that we'll be able to avoid it. This Mr. Oxford's lawyers are already in communication with the police. Oh, I see. Well, in that case, we're all in for it. I'd better get some hot water. Excuse me. We'd better clear out of this. We can go by the front door before he comes back. I didn't want to come in the first place. Now, Mother, Mother, <laughs> don't give way. <laughs> don't give way. Well, must you go? <sighs> Henry? Henry? It's all right, they've gone. Henry? How you startle me. Yes, ages ago. And where have you been? Walking. In the fog, without hat or coat. You'll be down with pneumonia. Here, get these wet things off. Sit here by the fire. <laughs> Don't scorn me. Oh, it isn't even hard. Hard. Mrs. Leake won't want me if I lose my feet. <laughs> Poor soul. And those two stout lads, my sons. What about them? How'd you get rid of them? By kindness. 
You know, if Oxford has begun advertising for me, he'll never stop until he gets me into court. Well, what will be, will be. And we won't worry about it. Mm. <laughs> it's not a hop. Alice, you don't really believe that I ever married that woman, do you? If there's one thing I'm sure of in this world, it's that you were never married to anyone before you married me. <laughs> that I will swear to. Yeah. Mm. Oh, it is not. It is, darling. <laughs> it is not. Oxford, please. Find Farrell with the line. Farrell alive? Farrell alive? With the American millionaire who's taken Oxford to court. Charges Oxford were selling him Farrell's, painted out the Farrell's name. Get Oxford, yes? Get Duncan Farrell. Yes, sir. Get Farrell's Farrell. Yes, sir. <laughs> Suspicious. What first aroused your suspicion? Quite by accident, one day I noticed the canvas maker's imprint on the back of one of the pictures, and it was dated. What was the date? 1932. That was two years after Brian Farrell's death. Exactly. And how many Farrells in all did you buy from Mr. Oxford since Mr. Farrell's death? Seven. And you believe them all to be fictitious? I believe them all to be fakes. What did you pay for? Eleven thousand pounds. Is this the picture that was dated? Yes. Is that the mark you... Yes. Gentlemen, you see the date. 1932. 1932. 1932. 1932. Less than a month after the twins were born, he left me. Is that your husband? That gentleman sitting on the end there? It is. Weren't you in doubt when you first saw him? It's all come over me since. Shouldn't a woman recognize the father of her own children? She should. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Brian Farrell was a gentleman. This bandit is a lout. I knew that the moment I set eyes on him. I packed him off at once. This fight with your cousin when you were children. Tell us what occurred. Well, we fought. Oh, you fought. What did you two naughty boys fight about? About a plum cake, I think. And uh, what was the result of this savage encounter? I remember tearing half his clothes off. Ah. Are you sure you remember that? Yes. I remember now that my cousin had two moles on his neck, just below the collar. Can you describe these adornments? <laughs> one was hairy, one was plain. So, after this correspondence with Mr. Lee, you met Mr. Farrell, thinking he was Mr. Lee. Yes. And married him. Yes. So he deceived you. No, he told me he was Brian Farrell. Then you knew all the time. Well, the poor dear wasn't well, and I thought he was imagining things. It was silly of me. When did you first come to believe he was Farrell? The day Mr. Oxford came. The day Mr. Oxford paid your husband 500 pounds? Yes. Was it the money that induced you to change your mind? You're very rude. Answer the question, please. I wouldn't have had my husband ragged by such vicious people for the Bank of England. I see, I see, I see. These are fictitious parrots because I see, I see, I see. Genuine parrots. 
fictitious pharaohs. <laughs> Genuine pharaohs. Fictitious pharaohs. Say your name is Priam Farrell? Yes. You have been known as Henry Lee? Yes. Which are you? Both. How can you be both? Oh, none of this interests me in the least. Please answer the question. It's all very stupid. Question, please. Who cares who I am? Question, please. I have no more of this. It's ridiculous. Question, please. I have better things to do. You are at work on a masterpiece, no doubt. Oh, some oaf will think it a masterpiece, no doubt. When did you meet Mr. Oxford? Well, he's been my dealer for many years. When did you meet him? Some weeks ago. When he discovered you were Farrell? Yeah. Was there a passage of money on this occasion? 500 pounds. When he paid you 500 pounds, you decided you were Farrell? He paid me 500 pounds for a picture. And you discovered you were Farrell? He discovered it. You didn't know it. Farrell is buried in the Abbey. I wish you'd let him rest there. Will you answer the question? Why put people in the Abbey if they to be dragged out again? What's the good of the place? Why must you torture him? Will you answer the question? Why must you torture him? Forgive me, Alice. I'm not being tortured. <laughs> It's all too comic. Order, please. Will you ask me a question? I am Priam Farrell. I've nothing more to say. Have you two moles? Yes. Where are they? On my neck, just below the collar. Will you indicate the spot? Perhaps you will remove your collar and show the moles to the court. No. You would prefer doing it, perhaps, in his lordship's room? No. But surely, I won't do it anywhere, Melissa. But the law? There is no law that can make me take off my collar. Must be a law. Must be a law. Must be a law. But the trial cannot proceed unless you remove your collar. It's not my trial. Oh, but it is. You may be put in uh, Hollowell for a bigger bit. I fancy at Hollowell they have a sharp method with people who won't take off their collar. Ah, England, in order to prove she has a great artist, arrests him for bigamy and shoves him into prison. Very characteristic. Quiet, dear. Now, Mr. Oxford, do you think my husband entitled to some part of the 11,000 pounds Mr. Whit paid you for his pictures? I'll gladly turn all of it over to him. Uh, less a reasonable commission. Well, that's fine of you, Oxford. You won't touch a penny of that wretched money, not a penny. I wouldn't dream of asking you to, dear. Oh. I shall touch it. Huh? Now, gentlemen, if you wouldn't mind leaving us alone a moment. Certainly, Certainly Mr. Powell. Now, love, we must be sensible. I don't care if they don't think you're an artist, but I won't have them thinking you're a bigamist and dragging you off to jail. They wouldn't dare. What I would they? nothing past them. Huh? Come, darling. Show the gentlemen your moles and we can go along home. Hmm? Must I? Won't be long. Oh. Gentlemen, my mole. The moles! The moles! The moles! The moles! The moles! Order, please! Congratulations! Order, please! Congratulations! Congratulations! I wonder what our new name will be. Mr. and Mrs. Oh, is it that matter? We'll miss our garden. We'll find another garden. Dear Henry. Dear Henry. You'll always be Henry to me. Nothing could change that. What are you thinking? I'm wondering whether they'll bury me the next time. <laughs> <laughs>